Welcome to another episode of Side Talk. I know it's been a while since you've heard from me, but I want to bring quality episodes and I want to make sure that they make sense. And I don't want to just do an episode just for the sake of doing an episode. So today I have a guest, Audrey B. Welcome, Audrey B. How are you? Hi, I'm doing great. How are you? I am well. Audrey B. appeared on Oh Hell No podcast, the Rasta episode. I did an episode about Rastas, like, you know, um, the origin. Yeah, the origin. Yeah. They come about. Exactly. So um, she was on that episode, and that episode really gets great downloads on YouTube. People, I guess, awesome. it's interesting to them. Yeah. Yeah. So today we are going to be talking about reaching out, you know, reaching out to our friends, our coworkers, why a lot of people don't reach out, why it might be hard for some to reach out, and why we should consider reaching out more to each other. So I want to start with the whole Black Lives Matter movement. Like, that has been like a real focus right now. Of course, we know that there have been a number of people who have lost their lives in the uh, presence of police officers. And it just has sparked outrage. And I think uh, the black community is just fed up. We've had enough. And now we're like coming out and we're protesting, we're videotaping, we're just standing up for each other because it's gotten to the point where it's just ridiculous. I mean, we saw all of this stuff happen and then you go online and it's still happening. Like to, at this very moment, I'm sure somebody's being pulled over just because of the color of their skin. And it's kind of exhausting, right? Mm -hmm. So how are you feeling, Audrey, these days with all of this stuff going on, these images that you have to see repeatedly now all of these racists who are constantly calling the police on people of color, who are going up to them saying, you know, racist things or just things that are just way out of line. What do you feel now? Like, how, how, how do you feel about this whole time? Um, I think it's it's saddening. I feel like we've seen it happen over and over and over again. It's possibly happened to you um, in different scenarios, whether it's a police pulling you over, whether it's retail shopping, whether it's um, looking for real estate, we've had to deal with some sort of form of racism. And all our life, we suppress it and we keep continuing because that's what we're kind of taught to do. Like, don't let that type, those type of things bother you. You brush it off. You confront it when you need to in a, in a, you know, in a good way, you know, good way. I'm putting that in a quotation marks, however you feel is the good way, but you're always taught to keep going, stay strong, keep your head up and just move on. And all our lives, we've just been suppressing everything that we've gone through. And I think this time now that we're all home, we have, we're not, we're not going anywhere. It's like the main focus and all of those things that for me, at least all those things that have happened to me in the past was just brought up to life during this whole time. I've thought about every single scenario that I've been through. I've even questioned myself. Should I have handled it a different way? Um, or should I have said something? So I think it was, it was a very, emotional time for me that first week. I mean, I even had to come off of Instagram for a couple of days yeah. because I couldn't take it anymore emotionally. I'm by myself. Like it's, it was just too much. It was way too much for me yeah. um, mentally. And usually I'm not like that, but I think it's because of everything. We're in COVID, you know, mm -hmm. we're all home. It's just different. Yeah. So definitely this was really tough. I'd agree. I feel like it has been overwhelming. Um, seeing the images, it's sickening to me. I just, I don't understand how someone could treat another human being like that um, just because of the color of their skin. I don't understand it. I guess because we weren't raised like that. We weren't raised to hate. So we don't really get it. 
you know, but mm-hmm. it's it's really hard for me to comprehend and process because I just don't understand that if you have someone in custody who's complying with your request, I just don't understand what happens in your mind that says, I don't care that this person is listening to me. I want to beat the shit out of them and I'm going to throw them on the floor and put my knee on their neck until they can't breathe until they die. Like, I don't care if they die. Like, what and kind of I don't person? care that someone's recording me watching. Right. right. And what, that's yeah, the that's the thing. sickest thing too. And not only that, all of this stuff is happening and you have some police officers who are still doing the same thing. People are recording, people are, mm-hmm. you know, protesting and they're still doing the same thing. It's like they come to work and say, I want to be, I want to be insta famous today. So I'm going to like definitely engage in this type of behavior. And I, I hope I get to pull somebody over and, you know, mistreat them so that I can be the next you know, police to be disgraced in public. Like, yeah, I just don't understand it. Like, wh- what is the IQ of these people? <laughs> like, yeah. it's really yeah. interesting to me. And- or is it that they feel, oh, that's not me. Um, that's not how I behave. And then they get into a scenario that they're unable to make educated, emotionally intelligent decisions. Right. I just, it's it's really crazy to me when I sit down and I think about it. I just can't imagine like the most recent case of that young man who was murdered uh, last year, Elijah McLean, like now that is coming to the forefront, right? This young man in Colorado who was walking down the street with a ski mask on and just long sleeves because he was cold. Someone calls the cops and says, oh, I think that this person is suspicious. And yeah, those people who are calling the police they should be arrested and thrown in prison. I'm serious. Like, this is crazy, okay? He was minding his business, walking down the street. How does that look threatening? How? And why would you pick up the phone to call the cops on somebody like that? Mind your damn business, right? Now this kid is dead, right? He's dead because of that. I just don't understand these sick ass people who are doing this, calling the cops just because they see somebody who is black and they think, Oh my God, he's black. He has to be doing something suspicious. He He can't just be walking down the street. Like black people can't even walk. Like I I don't, I don't understand. Like, you know, we're not allowed to walk. We're not allowed to talk. We're not allowed to drink. We're not allowed to sell cigarettes. We ain't allowed to do anything. (laughs) Like everything that we're doing is, should be policed. Right. Yeah. It's insane to me. I just, it just makes me so angry and I try not to get too, I I try not to absorb too much of it because then it's going to get into my spirit. And then when that happens, then it starts to change who you are as a person. Yes. And I really, we were raised to love everyone. As long as someone treats you well and does right by you, color is not something that we look at, right? We just don't. I wasn't raised like that. So um, even on my shows, my shows, my platform is open. I have an open platform to everyone because I feel like we can learn from each other, you know? Of course. So I just, it just really makes me sad and it's just really upsetting and it's overwhelming. And I hope that, you know, a year from now we see some serious change um, where we can say, well, geez, we made some progress, you know, but Right now, it's just a crazy time. So yeah. with that in mind, I'll start by asking, with all of this stuff going on, has anyone reached out to you who is of a different race to check on you during this very crazy time? Yeah, so I had um, two people reach out to me um, this, that Saturday when all the looting was happening and fires and all that good stuff. And they just reached out and they're like, Hey, are you okay? You know, I see what's going on. I just want to make sure like, you know, you're doing okay. How are you feeling? And you know, when they first initially reached out to me, I'm like, Oh, that's really sweet of them. Um, yeah, I'm doing okay. Thanks. And that, and that was kind of it. Like, but these women that they were women, these women that reached out to me, that's their nature. They're very compassionate about everything, all social and 
economic issues happening in the world. They're always very aware of everything going on. So I wasn't really surprised that they reached out because that's their personality and how they are. Mm -hmm. Um, But I was still grateful that they even thought of me, you know, because they didn't have to. So I thought that was great. And then that was pretty much it. I went to work and my first phone call was with this girl that I work with. And she just, first she just started talking and she was like, oh wait, how are you feeling? Are you okay? Like, what's, how, what, how's it going? And I was like, oh, um, because I, when she first started rattling, I'm like, wait a minute. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then, because it caught me off guard, it was the first person I spoke to that day and I'm already on high emotions And when she said, oh, wait, when she paused in the beginning, oh, wait, how are you doing? And we weren't in like video conference. This was on the phone. Mm -hmm. And she said, wait, how are you doing? And then we talked about it for like five seconds and then we kept going. And I thought to myself, wow, like, you know, she's acknowledging this and she's from um, another state. So I was like, "Okay, cool. And I kept going. And then for the rest of the week, I didn't hear from anyone else at my job. I mean, it was kind of like radio silence, business as usual, business as usual. Nothing was going on. Everything was pretty much the same as per usual. Mm -hmm. And it was really interesting to me. Like we would start off normally when events happen in the world that people talk about it Mm -hmm. that Monday in meetings or like you know, we're all pretty cool. We all work together for so long. So it's just something that you talk about, you know, when certain shows come out, something happens, you know, with, um, like Tiger, what was that? Tiger King? What was it called? Oh yeah. Yeah. I think it was yeah. called Tiger King. <laughs> Whatever it was called. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, th- just anything that's out, everyone's talking about it. But then when something like Black Lives Matter, mm-hmm. it's radio silence. Yeah. And I struggled that week. I questioned myself, like, why does it matter that someone's not reaching out to me? Why does it matter this time? Because when Tamar Rice died, no one reached out to me when other people died, as right. so many of us. Mm-hmm. Um, no one reached out about it. So... I really struggled with that. And then I thought about it. I'm like, because this is everywhere. You have people marching in every single, like not every single, but majority of the countries out there. Yeah. Like countries that I didn't even think would even march. Austria. Yeah. And Germany. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm like, this is something that everyone is. It's a big deal. Yeah. Talking about. And I feel like we should talk about it and we should acknowledge like you know right. to your black coworkers, like hey listen I'm your ally like I know what's going on in the world but don't think that I support what's going right. on or whatever the case may be exactly um, and I thought this is the best time to show that you are an ally to your coworkers mm-hmm. instead of just ignoring the elephant in the room right I agree I think so too I had a similar experience I had a couple people reach out to me, which was, I was pleasantly surprised because one person doesn't even work at my job anymore. And I was shocked that she took the time to like reach out and really like check on me and even say that, you know, she doesn't, this is not something that, you know, she experiences, right? So she's really absorbing everything that's going on and really trying to take this time to learn and educate herself, you know? So I really was responsive to that and just her reaching out to me. Um, another coworker reached out, which I appreciated her reaching out as well. Um, because she's like one of those white girls that are really cool. And when I say that, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? Like she's down with all the urban, you know, what do we call them? <laughs> you yeah, know, you yes, know. I know what you mean. Right. So she she's she's a really cool girl. I like her, but I'm glad that she reached out because if she didn't reach out, I would really have been looking at her with a crooked <laughs> eye, like girl bye. You know? So I'm glad that she reached out. And then 
the owner of my company, we were on a call, and before the call started, he said, how are you doing? You know, everything's going on, you know. But I have to say that I work at a company where the people that I work with are very personable, and they're very in touch with everything that's going on in the world, and they don't have a problem speaking on it or about it. And that's what I like about them. So most most of the people that I work with, they're like that. So, um, so that's funny you say that because that's the people that I work with. Wow. So I, that I was completely shocked when the people that are normally vocal and normally, um, you know, I work with very strong, intelligent women. Like I, I'm proud of where I work. Yeah. Um, so when I saw this, I was just like, wow. Right. It's insane. Some people, I follow some people on social media and they're, you know, they're out there, um, spreading the message. So, you know, seeing that is great, but I thought that was very interesting. And my company also did send out on that Saturday. Um, and a couple of days after just promoting and supporting black lives matter movement, because at the end of the day, like this is something that's affecting everybody. So, yes, definitely. Um, Another thing is I think that maybe some people, they're afraid to bring it up because they don't know how you're going to respond to it. So like maybe the people that are out there like pushing the message and talking about it, they just don't know how to approach it with you because it's kind of like, oh, oh my God, am I going to like offend her? Am I going to piss her off? Or, you know, Mm -hmm. they just don't know. So. I feel like that might be the case with some people and we're here to tell you, don't be like that. Don't worry about if you're going to upset us or whatever. You're not. If you're showing that you care, you see what's going on in the world and you're not, you want to be a part of the solution and you want to see things get better. It's always better to voice that and to share that with people that you work with of color that you really appreciate and like being around and have a good relationship with. So I just want to share that with you guys. You know, don't be afraid to say, hey, I see what's going on. I just want you to know that I get it and I want to be a part of the solution. And if you need an ear, I'm here or whatever, you know, even if you have questions about it, you know, I feel like it, it's okay to, to, to ask questions or to say, Hey, do you have five minutes that we can talk about this? Because I just have so many questions. You know what I mean? I feel like that will be well received. I don't think that any person of color would be like, get the hell out of my face. Don't ask me shit. Like, I don't think that would happen. (laughs) You know what I mean? Especially now. Right. I think that person would have to be crazy. I I had another, um, someone else reached out to me who no longer works with me as well. And she, she said the same thing. She was like, you know, I don't want to make any mistakes when I'm talking, but I'm also not afraid to make mistakes and learn from it because I'm, I'm learning. So if I say something wrong, like, let me know. And this is what I'm here. I'm not afraid to be uncomfortable like this is what this is all about and why we should be speaking and I was like yes right absolutely yeah absolutely and I think that's the biggest thing is people are just uncomfortable with talking about things that are just out there and you know I feel like you have to be comfortable with being uncomfortable sometimes yeah and just saying how are you doing it's You can get, I'm doing good. I'm not doing good. Sometimes you can just be a listening ear to hear someone vent Mm -hmm. and that's it. And you can just say, listen, I hear you and I'm, I'm here to be your ear or whatever the case may be. Right. Um, but sometimes that's what people need. They need that comfort. Absolutely. I agree. So that's where we are with that. And I feel like that is going to be a conversation that goes on for our very long time to come. So if you want to be a part of the solution, bridging the gap, making things better, be vocal and and speak up and show your friend or your coworker or whoever it is that's in your life that you know is a part of this community that is the oppressed. You know, let them know that hey, I'm here. I want to understand this. I want to learn and I want to be 
a part of the solution, right? And not the problem. Yeah. Yeah. It's perfectly said. Yeah. Moving on from that, since as we're talking about coworkers, let's just, you know, wrap up that segment with this other question. But before I do that, let me just, I usually do a survey. So I did a survey on, you know, people reaching out during this time. I asked, have you reached out to a coworker or a friend during the BLM uh, movement, Black Lives Matter uh, movement to see if they are okay? 57% said yes. And, you know, the other percentage said no. And then, Hmm. um, but I'm not sure if, all of these people who took the survey were all black people or, you know, but we, we have to reach out to each other too. Like, you know what I mean? Just to check in and make sure, because, you know, you never know what this does to someone's mental, someone's spirit. You don't know if someone has experienced, just like Audrey said in her past, she has experienced certain things and this triggered that and she relived those things so you never know what somebody has experienced and then this might cause them to have a you know reaction to it that you know disrupts their mental health so right i think we all have to just as human beings reach out to each other and say hey dude you okay there's a lot going on you know so um no one said that they were afraid to reach out and that would, that, I guess that's good, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So the next question I had was, have you ever reached out to a coworker after they were fi- fired to see if they were okay or to share kind words? And most people said, yes, they did. Only a small percentage of people said that they didn't. Great. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about that. Work is a big part of our life, right? Most of us spend most of our time at work, right? You're there Monday through Friday. Um, Some people have really long hours. Some people work the standard eight hours a day. But even still, you're spending more time at work than you are with your family when you really think about it, right? Yeah. So at work, we develop relationships. We have friendships. We have workships you know, or whatever you want to call them. So when someone gets let go, I guess maybe everyone's first thought is like, oh my God, what happened? You know, you want the tea. And then once you, (laughs) (laughs) once you get the tea, then it's like, damn, you know, some people just feel like, well, let's get back to work. You know, I knew Becky was going to get fired one day because she just never listened or whatever the situation is. Right. But I think it's always nice to check on people. Like I have always, if I had that person's cell phone number, that means that I spoke to them more than, you know, just at work. So if I have their number, sending a little text, there's nothing wrong with that. And I know that most people think, well, when someone gets fired, they probably don't want to hear from anyone at the job because they're mad and they have like, you know, resentment towards everybody that's still employed there. So they're not going to want to hear from you. That's not necessarily true. So I make it a practice to send a text message. Um, even if I wasn't, in love with the person, like they weren't my favorite person, but I did have their cell number for whatever reason. I'll send an encouraging text like, Hey, I know that you, you know, this is really a messed up day, but when one door closes, another one opens or a window opens and just know that, (laughs) you know, I I always say stuff like this. Just know that God has a plan for you and you're going to be fine. Like, you know, so I do the same. Yeah. So, um, that's good. So you've never had anybody, have you ever been let go and no one reached out to you? No, um, knock on wood. I have not been let go. Thank God. Um, and this is actually a interesting topic to have because our unemployment rate right now is skyrocketing. Yep. So this is something that I'm sure people will experience. Yes. Um, but I have been through an, multiple companies that I've worked for where we've had major layoffs. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, you know how it goes, like corporate America, there's a layoff every year. Yep. So I always make it, um, I always make an intention to reach out to people that, like you said, I have their number, we've spoken. 
Um, in my profession, I travel a lot with my coworkers. Mm-hmm. So we have, we end up having this bond because you're traveling with these coworkers on a 16 hour flight with these people. You're doing late nights in a foreign country with these people. So, you know, we, we get to know each other pretty personal. So I definitely make sure that I reach out and I also say a couple encouraging words. And I say this to say to people who are afraid, you know, what's the worst that can happen Right. by you sending a little text message to say like, hey, you know, you are a great coworker. Um, I enjoyed working with you and good luck with everything. You know, you can always use my number or my email as a reference for right. future jobs or if you don't want to get that personal because you don't want them to use you <laughs> as a reference because <laughs> you really didn't like the way the working style was, right. you don't have to do that, obviously. But just right. saying like, hey, you know, I'm reaching out and I just want to let you know that um, I'm thinking about you, whatever. Good luck. And I reached out to multiple people that I've reached out to in the past have told me like, hey, you're the only one that has reached out to me. Mm-hmm. And that that always makes me really sad because it's like I said, and I'm repeating myself, but you know we work together eight hours, sometimes ten hours yes. a day. So to see that it's 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 really sad. Right. And I guess you know it's something that now that I've lived through this experience because I've never been laid off, but I lived through this experience with what's going on now, Mm -hmm. I shouldn't really even hold people for not reaching out at this point. Right. (laughs) Because. Right. You could see how people people, are very self-absorbed and just kind of doing their own thing and not really. Or they're just scared. Yeah. Or they're they're scared scared to hear you, to hear you vent or they don't want to say the wrong thing. Right. Um, And to me, I've never been afraid to. You know, I always put my best intentions out there. So if you feel, you know, the worst case scenario, you, why, why are you reaching out to me? Yeah. Like, say, you know, who's going to say that? <laughs> God bless and good luck. Right. And that's it. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. Right. And um, if you know the person is crazy like that, you probably wouldn't even want to reach out anyway. Right. right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. You'd be like, Joe was crazy. I'm not saying nothing. Good, <laughs> good luck. Exactly. <laughs> right. Yeah. Exactly. Which is another thing why I was surprised that people didn't reach out because that's not even my personality. Right. So they should know. And it makes you. you think like, why why wouldn't you talk about it with me yeah you talk about everything else exactly (laughs) right exactly people think about because we do we Mm -hmm. i talk about with my work wife i talk about all (laughs) types. i talk about my husband i talk about cooking cleaning my daughter school camp you know um my podcast my business we talk about everything Mm -hmm. right and um, my work wife, and initially, she did not reach out to me about this whole thing. But I gave her a pass because we have had conversations and she does not watch the news. Mm. She's one of those people who, I guess, likes to keep her head in the sand because it's just easier for her to keep a positive outlook on life right which i just to mention i don't watch the news either yeah some people are like that it's just better for them even my mom we were having this conversation today and she was saying that her nerves cannot take it and she doesn't like watching all of this stuff it's too much for her and everybody has a point a breaking point where they have to know themselves so because i know that she doesn't watch the news a lot not that she wouldn't have heard that this is going on because it's a big thing but then we were having a conversation and she asked me if i was going to cover any of this stuff on you know on one of my podcasts and she said you know i think it would be good you know blah 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 so that was kind of her way of mentioning it without getting into a deep conversation about it. And again, I give her a pass because I kind of know who she is based on the conversations that we have, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know? And some people, believe it or not, no, why am I saying believe it or not? 
some people really have a problem accepting and believing that racism is really a thing, <laughs> right? And I, I don't think so. I, 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 no, I, think... I really think that they don't. Listen, if you were raised, if you're, if you're white, right, and you lived in an all-white neighborhood, all your friends are white, you guys all have the same, you know, access to everything. You've never been discriminated against. You don't really have black friends. And if you do have black friends, you keep everything very surface. So you never really get into, um, you never really see anything that they have experienced or, you know, you don't know about it. Right. Cause you just have this little black friend that you see every once in a while and it's, it's not too deep, you know, <laughs> now, even though, their family member may say racist things, right? Right? They still think that that's just my dad's opinion, but he's not going out there and doing anything to anyone. He's not stopping anyone from having anything or whatever, right? Because maybe her dad doesn't have that power or her mom doesn't have that power, right? So they don't, they don't believe that it's really a thing, you know, like, I just think that maybe black people are are exaggerating or maybe they're misinterpreting what's happening or, you know, maybe they're not looking at things in a positive way. I really think that that's what they tell themselves to just so that they don't have to think about it because it doesn't affect them. It Mm. really doesn't. We had a conversation at work one day where there's a two a a co-owner and a co-owner at my company. It's like two people, right? And one of the co-owners, he is so well-versed in, you know, um, American, black American history and all of the terrible things that have been done to black people in this country. And one day we just started talking about it and he was just dropping some knowledge. And it was me, an Indian girl, and two white people listening to him talk. And one of the people that was listening was my work wife. (laughs) And she was just like, I can't believe that this happens. Like, I just can't believe it. And he was talking about, you know, he has friends that are, you know, people of color who are in very, you know, um, prominent positions. They have a lot of money. They have done very well for themselves. And he was telling us how they get profiles all the time. They have these nice expensive cars and they're getting pulled over just because they're a black man driving a Porsche or a whatever, right? Or they're walking down the street and they're well-dressed and they're getting a police officer coming up to them, asking them where they're going, or let me see your ID or whatever, right? And he was telling these stories and she was like, but I don't understand. Like, I just can't believe that this is happening. Like, why would the police officer do that? Like, maybe there's a reason. Like, you know, she just couldn't get it. And he was like, there is no reason. It's because they're black. Like, (laughs) he's so funny, but he's right to the point. Like, he, he just like, hits the nail on the head and tells it like it is. And I was so glad that it was him telling that story and not yes. me, you know? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So, which is another privilege at that. Right. And he, he said it, he was like, I never have to worry about that. He said, I, that, that doesn't happen to me. Right. And he, the way he was just telling it, like, I totally appreciated it. It was just amazing. It was an amazing moment, but yeah, she really didn't, you know, she just couldn't digest it. And even though she knows, she's heard racist remarks around her, you know, right? But for some reason, she thinks that it doesn't go beyond that. But it does. Because mm-hmm. and where there's... She probably thought you you never come into work talking about Black Lives Matter. Right. That maybe she thought that you wouldn't care to speak about it because right. you never speak about it. Right. Yeah. So... You know, I I don't know. I just feel like sometimes people are just very, um, they keep themselves in a certain box so that they don't have to look outside of this box and they don't have to really face reality, face reality, 
Yeah. Which, yeah. <laughs> but when you have children in this world, you have to face reality because you don't know which way your children are going to go. Exactly. And children are people and people fall in love with other people. And sometimes you might not think that your child is going to go outside of your race to find love. And when they do, then you have to figure out, holy cow, how am I going to deal with this? Right? Yep. So I just, you know, people wake think, up. Yeah. Yeah. I think this is a good time for people to wake up and yeah. teach they're your forced children. to because there's no sports on. There's no right. whatever is on, you know, people are home. Right. So we got to teach our kids to love and treat people with respect and dignity and treat them the way that they want to be treated, regardless of their race. Um, just be decent human beings. And once you do that, you will start a new trend. And eventually, you know, these racist people will die. <laughs> <laughs> and, and what they're breeding will die out. And then we will eventually have a world where people are loving each other and respecting each other for, you know, who they are as opposed to yeah. what they look like. Yep. So that's the hope. I don't know. Let's see. Yeah. So back to um, reaching out. Um, all right. So people, when your coworker gets let go, please be nice. Send a message of encouragement. It's not going to cost you anything. And if they don't respond, so what? I sent one time, yeah. I sent someone a message and, and I wrote like this whole long thing, like, you know, you know, the door closes and when well, window opens, like, you know, <laughs> she was like, thanks. <laughs> like, right. And that's okay. And that's she fine. Was, right. Cause yeah. she was in her feelings. It was very fresh, but when she had to look back at it, she was like, wow, she was the only one that reached out. Like, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it means something to people because I honestly do care. It's not like I don't care. I'm like, oh, forget them. No, I want to give people a positive message to just say, this is not the to end for you. And to show that, you know, I was, I'm, I'm here for you. Right. You know, like yeah. you're not a disposable person as some of these companies treat employees like someone could come and uh, take your position at any time. Yeah. So, you know, a lot of people, we put our blood, sweat and tears into these companies and then to one day just come into work and they're like, OK, um, I know you worked 12 hours yesterday, but we're sad to say this, but we have to let you go. Mm. <laughs> so it's it's nice to see that it's comforting to see that someone um, people care. Right. That you worked with. Exactly. And that's what I've the feedback that I've gotten from other people, you know, because I remember one one girl told me, um, you know, at certain points, I'm wondering, you know, did so-and-so who I thought I was cool with and I vented to in the past, did they set me up to get fired? You know, people go to all these extremes because, you know, they're in their emotions. Right. But they start thinking that, like, was Keisha a part of the plan right. to get me fired? Yeah. You know, I remember that time I didn't send her the email on time and she was upset. <laughs> oh, Can you imagine. I, oh my God. Yeah. No. You know, that's so true. Sometimes yeah. it's just a, right. a way to make people feel like you're still worthy. <laughs> right. That's and not the best thing to say, but you know, you're, you're, you're cared and you're thought of. Yeah. And just to remind them that, Hey, Brighter days are ahead. That's what I, that's the message that I always share with people when they, when they exit a job, because it's a very traumatic experience and people don't call just to get the tea. Like that is really yeah, bad. I never do that. Like, don't do that. I already know the tea. You got laid off. Like that's it. No, but some people <laughs> will definitely be like, oh my God, what happened? Or like, you know, yeah, yeah. don't do that. That's not. Yeah, no, I would never. Yeah, that's not cute. So just if you're going to ask that question, just keep it pushing. Don't. Mm -mm. Have you ever been laid off and yes. had any experience? I was laid off many, many years ago from a company and I was laid off and I was told I worked. It was an airline. And I was told mm -hmm. that the FAA, 
no longer thought that my position was necessary. So they were doing away with the position. So they were going to lay me off, give me a package, and that was it. Mm -hmm. So um, I was laid off. And then the next week or so, I was told that the head of the department put his friend, who he Mm -hmm. had on standby, um, Mm -hmm. in my position and changed the title. Yeah, that's what they do. Yeah. And they were white males. Yes, that did happen to me. And I I was happy because I was driving from New Jersey to Westchester every day. And at the time, I had like a one-year-old. So I had Mm -hmm. to drop her off in the Bronx to the babysitter, then go to Westchester, then at the end of my day, pick her up in the Bronx and then head over the bridge. I lived like right over the bridge. But Mm -hmm. it was so taxing. And yeah. it was a lot for me. So when I got yeah. laid off, it was like a relief, you know? Mm-hmm. And then nice. um, I got to spend the summer with my baby. And even though I was a little stressed out or whatever, I knew that things would eventually work out. And they did, huh. you know? Yeah. I got a better yeah. position and things worked out. People were reaching out to me, but people were reaching out to me more so to be nosy and to give me gossip about what they were doing and blah, 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 blah. And oh my Which God. Which comes with it sometimes. Right. You know, so that can be very stressful because when people are calling you just to kind of like feed you negativity, oh, you should sue them. You should this, you should that. It's just like not, you, that's not always necessarily where you want yeah. to put your energy. Yeah. You know, so just be yeah. careful when you call people what your intentions are and what you're filling their minds with, you know, sure. so be thoughtful of, of, of that. Yeah. Cause that, that would really hurt me if someone calls me and said, Oh, by the way, that job, cause you can sue Yeah, for that, you know, and, and, you know, just, and they could get in trouble too. Yeah. For even telling you. So, right. Oh you know? Um, yeah. You just gotta be careful with that. Yep. Swish your, give best wishes and keep it moving. Exactly. So checking in on your friends. So let's talk about your friends, not your coworkers, your friends. So do you regularly check in with your friends? Like even if there are, cause you know, there's different relationships that we have with people we call friends. You can have a friend that you've known since you were a child and maybe you guys, your lives have grown apart because that person has moved and they live in a different area, but you guys talk maybe once every six months and it's like you never skipped a beat, but you're not, it's not someone you speak to all the time. So with that being said, do you feel like you are the friend that checks in regularly with your day ones, your day to days and your, you know, people that are all over the place? Yeah, I I definitely check in. I think social media also helps because we're sending each other memes and messages. And um, so I definitely check in and some some things, you know some things that you send leads into a conversation Mm -hmm. about what's going on in their own life or my own life. So I definitely think I, I talk to everyone. Um, obviously there's friends that I talk to every single day, all day. Um, and then there's friends that just these one-offs, I just feel like you are, when you do talk to some of friends that maybe once every six months, you pick right back up where you left off. So yeah, I do check in on friends. That needs to be heated up. So, okay. Yeah. Um, girl. So, yeah, I agree. I check in on some people, depending, just to be like, hey, how's it going? Like, like I said earlier, there are people that I have in my life that don't live around, that I've been friends with forever. So, you know, social media is amazing because you definitely can connect in that way, right? Mm -hmm. So that's, I love social media and I love that about it. And then there are people that, you know, you talk to every day, all day long. So, yeah. Yeah. So I do check in on people um, regularly. Let me see. That was a question in my survey. 
And most people do check in with their friends regularly. And then there was like 28% that said sometimes. So I wonder what that sometimes mean. Does sometimes mean... Every six months. Yeah. Once a year on a Mother's Day or on Christmas. Yeah. Maybe it means like, you know, sometimes I check on my friends. Like, you know, if I haven't heard from them then I'm not, you know, I'm not checking in or, <laughs> you know, or maybe yeah. if it's like not Mother's Day or their birthdays, like I'm not checking in, like who knows, you know? So I think it's important that if you have a friend that you should check in and you, mm-hmm. why you should check in is because you just want your friends to know that, hey, I'm still here. Life gets busy. We all work. We Some of us have kids. Some yeah. of us have side hustles. Some of us got all types of stuff that we're doing outside of work. So we all get busy and that's understood. But if someone is important to you, once in a while, drop them a line. Hey, how are you doing? How's the fam? Okay, good. Just checking in. That's it. So, yeah, right? Absolutely. All right. So, um the next question on my survey was um have you ever had some have you ever had something happen in your life and no one reached out and you wish someone would have? So, the answer to that um was it was almost uh ha no wait, sorry. So, yeah, uh, I would say most people said yes. Oh, good. Yeah, most people said yes, that they have had something happen in their life and no one reached out and they wished someone would have. Well, my question to that is, did anyone know about what had happened? You know, depending on what it is, Um, because a lot of people are very private with Mm. things that happen. Yeah. You know, I know some people there, if, you know, someone passes away in their family, it's not really something that you call all your friends and go, right. hey, everybody, right. you know, my family member passed. You, you do that for your like very, very close friends, but right. like your friend who. But then, you know, um, that word travels, right? Because mm-hmm. so let's say something happens, you call your close friend and you say, oh, my God, this happened to me. So I might be MIA because I'm dealing with this and whatever. And that friend is like, oh, my God, I can't believe this. And they tell someone else, oh, my God, this is happening with Audrey. You should check in on her. You know, t- mm-hmm. t- totally pure intentions, not like in a gossipy type of so- yeah, so- yeah, way, of you know, but just really wanting to um, let other people know, listen, if you don't hear from her, she's going through something. So with regard, it, with if it comes out like that, how do you feel about someone reaching out to you that you didn't directly tell that you were going through something? Personally, I wouldn't mind. Okay. You know, I'm, it depends on the situation. If it was yeah. something that like, I didn't want no one to know. Then, obviously, then you probably I, wouldn't I would tell upset. anybody. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. You, would, you wouldn't. Let me just tell y'all, Audrey is very, um, I don't want to say secretive, but she's very quiet. <laughs> I'm private. Private. I'm private. That's the word. Yes. Private. She's very private. Um, so, but yeah, I wouldn't. I, obviously, I wouldn't. I wouldn't like that. But if it's something that, oh crap, I forgot to tell Keisha about, then I wouldn't mind. Yeah, yeah. I don't mind um, people reaching out if something happened. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. With someone sending me a text, like it doesn't have to be a phone call. I'm not the type of person right. that's like, oh, she texts me she didn't even call oh, like no yeah, some, people are like- <laughs> some people are like that they're crazy right like you can't even text but old-fashioned our parents are like that because sometimes my mom gets like that like oh oh you couldn't even call you just send me some texts and you know it's, it's like mom right. relax like you, know? you just sent a meme that right, <laughs> right. <laughs> so we got to be careful with our um Older, older generation. generation because they definitely yeah. want a phone call for certain things. They, they're they not playing True. that text business. So True. you have to be mindful of that. But for us younger generation, and I say younger yeah. loosely, <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, we definitely have more flexibility. So I do not mind 
um, if people text um, and say, hey, so sorry to hear, like, you know, a couple of months ago, I had an aunt that passed and I posted a picture just saying, you know, to just saying that she passed because it's COVID and it's a crazy time. And I really cannot believe that she died. Like, I'm still in shock. Like, I, I like, really? Like, yeah. it's yeah. crazy to me. So yeah. the last time um, I spent with her was at my renewal. So I posted that picture and I just was like, just a little like, oh my God, like, you know, and people reached out and sent text messages and sent, you know, and I appreciated that. I didn't think yeah. it was like, you know, anything negative. So mm -hmm. um, just know that if your friends are going through something, a quick text is better than nothing at all, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, but Audrey makes a very good point is that if you're going through something and nobody knows about it, you can't be mad that nobody reached yeah. out to you. <laughs> so be very careful people. Cause I know there's a lot of crazy people out there who will, will be mad because nobody <laughs> reached out. And then when, you know, somebody say, well, did you tell anybody? No, I didn't tell right. anybody, but I mean, mm, mm, right. Mm, mm. Yeah. And assuming that, okay, I told Keisha, so I know Keisha talks to all these people. Right. So I know Keisha's going to tell people. Yeah. And that's not always the case. Keisha probably is busy. Right. And doesn't have time. Or doesn't like repeating stuff because I'm like that. Like, um, one of our friends was sick. They had COVID. I did not tell anybody that. Right? right? Not anybody that would, you know what I'm saying? I told my family, mm -hmm. but not any friends. So, yeah. If I. Sometimes you don't want to be the news bearer. I right. Really you tell. It's not my your story own to personal tell. Personal news. Right. Yeah. I feel like it's not my story to tell. So, I'm not going to go around calling everybody, telling everybody <laughs> that this person has COVID. Like, no, it's not my business. <laughs> I'm going to just call and make sure that that person knows that I care and I want to know that they're okay or check in with their loved ones. Right. But I'm not right. going to be, mm -mm, nope, I'm not doing that. So yeah, that's be mindful people. Sometimes you tell one person and that person is not a news carrier, so they will not share. So yes, just be mindful of that. So, um, my next question was, if you end a friendship with someone and something happens to them, would you reach mm -hmm. out? Um, for example, death in the family, termination of employment, any major things, maybe even like having a baby or getting engaged or getting married. You know, there's also positive things that happen in people's lives. So let me tell you what the result was. And then um, I want you to tell me what your answer is. So... Um, seven, only 7% 7 of people said no, they would not reach out. 50% said maybe. Oh, interesting. So, yeah. So what would, would you reach out if you ended a friendship with this person and then something major happened in their life? You heard through the grapevine, would you reach out? I would be in the maybe percentage as well. I think it depends on what the, how the friendship ended if the friendship ended in something that, you know, was very negative, then I probably wouldn't be on, to be honest. Um, but if it was something, you know, like, you know how you have friends that you guys just grow apart mm -hmm. or it was just a mutual thing that, you know, we've, we were friends when we were in kindergarten, but now we're not, you know, things like that. Yeah. Um, like you lost touch then I would yeah, yeah that kind of thing that I would reach out for sure yeah for me it's a no so um, okay <laughs> <laughs> if I was friends with you and we are no longer kicking it um and something good happens something bad happens I wish you well but you will not be hearing from me that's okay. it I'm just saying. That's fair. Yes. Yeah. So if someone dies, don't expect me to reach out because it's not that I don't feel your pain, but I think it's quite phony to be calling people because someone died just to be like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Well, were you happy for me when my loved one was alive and we weren't mm -hmm. speaking? Like, mm -hmm. I feel like if you have love for someone or you know, work out your differences and, and main and, and fix that, repair that friendship. 
You know what I'm saying? Rather than to let a friendship be dead and then something happens and then you want to use that as a way to kind of get back in. Like, no, no. Yeah. Fix what's wrong. I guess it depends on the scenarios like we were saying like how how that friendship ended yeah but i mean if it's a negative if you grew apart just because you kind of lost contact then absolutely like if something happens i had that with a friend like when we were in high school we were like really close like hanging out Mm -hmm. every day whatever she got married she moved to another state and every once in a while we would reconnect but then we would just kind of like not really stay in touch because she lives in another state and she has a whole family and I have a whole family and she's busy and I'm busy. She's in a different time zone. Like it's just hard to maintain friendships that way. But her mom passed. And of course I knew her mom, my mom knew her mom. So of course I reached out like, Oh my God, I'm so sorry. You know, blah, 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 blah. So yeah, I agree with you hundred percent. If you kind of grow apart, but you, you know, there was no beef or there wasn't anything that happened that was negative but if something negative happened like I found out that you were whack or you know you just betrayed me or I found out that you were a fraud girl bye yeah yeah (laughs) yeah I get it (laughs) totally not calling so the last question was if you have trouble reaching out to people what is the reason and let's see some I'm going to just read a few. Um, yeah, I'm curious. I want to know what the reason is. This one is funny. They hated me. I, I don't know what that means, but maybe that is like a specific person that. You yeah, know. I think that's a that's a good probably back to our previous conversation where right. the, the friendship or whatever it is ended bad and right. they probably heard something and they really want to reach out because they knew how much the person cared about whatever happened and yeah they just know like reaching out to him or her is not going to result in a good thing this person said contact information was no good so that's like growing apart this person said i don't have trouble reaching out but if i do it would be because of an anticipated negative response so which is all a s- assumption cuz you yeah. don't even know what the response will be. Yeah. But I guess if there is some type of underlying thing going on, maybe you can anticipate that you might receive a negative. Especially if it's fresh. If it's yeah. fresh. Yeah. Yeah. I'm shy and mostly introverted. So that's always <laughs> something too, yeah. like when you're shy yeah. and you, but I would feel like if you are shy and you manage to, have a relationship with someone, then that person kind of knows you. So then your comfort level should be a little bit different with that person, right? Yep. I agree. So, yeah. I think that that's something that people brought up too in the past couple of weeks. Like some people are introverts, some people are shy, some people don't like confrontation, even yeah. though they know that you're not a confrontational person, but they feel like, you know, they don't want to bring up something that's going to stir or, you know, make you feel uncomfortable. Yeah, that could be it too. And just the overall uncomfortable conversations, like no one likes to have a potentially uncomfortable conversation. Right. right? And I think people probably feel like, what if I, what if they say like, what do you think? And then I don't say the right thing and then blah, blah, blah. But for me, I feel like I'm okay. I'm comfortable with having those type of conversations, but someone who's an introvert or who's doesn't like any sort of confrontation. Yeah. That would be harder for them. So for me, I don't feel like I have trouble reaching out to people. I personally, I personally like checking in on people. I check in on people that I used to work with that I have their cell phone numbers, like, it might be like once in a while, Hey, what's up? How are you doing? How's your kids? How's your, you know, like if they pop in my head, yeah, I don't, I love checking on people because I love hearing how they're doing. And I mean, I guess you could probably imagine that I do. I have a podcast where I'm always digging into people's (laughs) business, right? Right. (laughs) So that's the norm for me. So yeah, I really don't have a problem checking in on people. And I really don't even have a problem. Like even if, um, 
The only way that I will not check on you is if I'm not checking for you. <laughs> so if I'm not checking in on you, pay attention. I'm not checking for you. <laughs> So yeah. that's how I roll. So that's how you know, oh, this bee ain't checking on me. She ain't checking for me. <laughs> well, and then that, and that's the thing. Like, I think for me, if I don't hear from you, I'm like, okay, I see where you stand. Right. So, yeah. So then that kind of lets that's you know. that's me assuming as well. Like, it's, it's just. Right. I know. It's having the, these are the conversations that you need that people don't know. You know, this is why these podcasts are great because people get to learn like, oh, I didn't even realize that people wanted a, a text after they get fired. Or I didn't know that people after, you know, uh, something socially that's happening in, in the news or in the world that people would want to be checked in on. I didn't right. know that, you know, things like that. Th- this is, these are the type of conversations that people need to have or listen to so that's why this podcast is great yeah because you talk about things like that and people learn Absolutely. Um, and you don't have to agree with everything obviously because right. these are these podcasts are all about opinions but I think these are the things that not everyone talks about this yeah it's thought provoking you know like if yeah. you have a co-worker and that co-worker is you know, Chilean and there's an earthquake in Chile. Hey, send them a text. Be like, Hey, do you have any family in Chile? Is everything okay? Are you okay? You never yeah. know. Yeah. Little things like that yeah. go a long way. Right. So true. Mm-hmm. So those are so the true. things that we're trying to make people more conscious of just we're having these thought provoking conversations to make you more socially aware and just a little bit better about how you go about your day and how you interact with people. And that's really why I wanted to have this conversation today. And let me just say, for my last comment about um, if I'm not checking on you, I'm not checking for you. Um, I think that, too, like Audrey said, that might make, Sometimes people are busy and they just, right. it's not that they're not checking for you, right? Yeah. Um, so just be careful. It might come careful. later on in the week. Right. It might come later on in the week. But I think you know what I'm saying. If it's been like three weeks and <laughs> I haven't texted, be like, yo, what's up, girl? Or what's up, boo? Or what you doing? Or I haven't hit you on Instagram or whatever. I'm not really checking for you like that. And, um, and I think your personality, I think if the person will know, yeah, they, they won't find that out through a sudden, you know, issue yeah. in their life. That's like that true. wouldn't be their first time. So. Right. Yeah, that's true. So, yeah. So it's a, it's a, it's a delicate balance. So just be careful. Like if you haven't heard from your friend for like a week or like a week and a half, just hit them up. Be like, yo, what's up? You okay? Everything good? And then if they hit you right back, but like, yeah, girl, I just been busy. Kind of like Insecure. Can we just talk about that for like 10 minutes? You watch Insecure, Mm -hmm. right? Yes. So when, do you think that Issa did anything wrong to Molly? No, but I I see, I see certain points where Molly is, um, what do you call it? Self-absorbed to think that she needs all this attention, but No. What do you think? I don't think she did anything wrong. I'm saying if your friend is doing, she's now like on her own, an entrepreneur. Right. Finally, she's throwing a major event that she is figuring out how to do while she's doing it. And she's inundated with all of these tasks and things to do. And she doesn't really have the time that she used to have to kind of be there for you. I think that you can give her a pass on that. Absolutely. Right? So that's why I say, if you haven't heard from your friend in a week, a week and a half, please just hit them up and be like, yo, you good? Everything okay? And let them, allow them to say, yo, I've just been so busy at work. They're driving me crazy. Or, oh my God, I got some family stuff going on. I've been so busy. My kids are doing this, whatever. Like, allow them to you know, let you know what they're doing. Don't assume 
that they're just ignoring you or, oh, they think they too good because they doing a side hustle or, oh, they do, you know, <laughs> like, just don't assume or, oh, she got a man now. She don't have time for me. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah. sometimes yeah. people, it's hard for them to readjust, you know, their time. Maybe they did meet someone and now they're dating and now they're working, they're dating, and they're trying to balance the dating, the friendships, and working. Some people, it comes very natural to them. Other people, it takes a little bit of time for them to understand how to balance stuff. So just... Oh, absolutely. Right? Yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. That's true. So I think just reach out and, you know, it's okay for you to reach out as well, just to be like, yo, you good and keep it like that. And then, well, just to be devil's advocate, if I'm not good right mm -hmm. now, you know, sometimes, and that could be again, where I was saying this whole self-absorbent, it's like, I'm not good. So I'm not checking on her to see what she's right. doing. You know, yeah. you know, she should be checking in on me. Um, yeah, then you're, and that's, a, that's people's you, thought process. There. Then you're not yeah. a good friend. You're not, you're exactly. not a good friend and you need to check yourself. If yep. you're, here's the thing. We had this, I had this conversation on my other class, um, my other podcast with Jay Bless. And we talked about this and we talked about ghosting, right? How whack mm -hmm. ghosting is. And ghosting is mm -hmm. when somebody just disappears on their friends Right. So or dating or dating. Right. You can get ghosted in a relationship. People. It right. happens. <laughs> yeah. I think that's where the word was derived from. Right. Absolutely. So I think that if you are not well, I think that it's OK to send your friends a message saying I'm going through some stuff. And I just need a moment. So if you don't hear from me, yes, it's not because great. I'm ignoring you. I just need some time. If you are, that's a great point. Or if you're going through something and I'm, and you're like, you know, why did it so-and-so hit me up? All they're doing is, you know, doing their event. I'm using Issa as an example. Then you can say to them like, Hey, when you get a moment, I'm going through some stuff and I would really want to have your ear. Yes. If you're so desperate to have uh, right. something come from them, um, yes. you can do that too. Yeah, because the point here is communication is so important. And if you're not communicating effectively with your friends and whoever else in your life, they are not going to know what your needs are. We are not mm -hmm. mind readers. We all have lives. We all have things that we're consumed with. So we have to be very, um, what is that word that I'm looking for? <laughs> Sometimes mindful. Like, mindful yes sometimes small words escape me like I just can't even think everybody like, everybody seriously but um we have to be very um deliberate mm. in what we communicate to each other right so if you are going through something you do need some time there's nothing wrong with saying yo I'm going through some stuff I'm okay though but I just need some time to myself that's fine Right. And if you see mm -hmm. that person on social media, don't that might be their way of, you know, de-stressing or whatever. So don't think, oh, she got time to be on social media, but she ain't got time to call <laughs> me back. Like, no, that's not right either. You know what I mean? Because really, literally, like for me, I watch um, reality TV to de-stress because it's mindless entertainment. Right. So mm -hmm. I just watch this. I don't have to think about anything. I just watch these people act crazy and I just laugh. Right. And that mm -hmm. helps me to like relax and calm down. And I also like browsing um, social media. Right. Because it's also mm -hmm. very entertaining. So yes. I might not have the capacity to talk to someone at this time or listen to someone. But I just want to sit in front of a TV or sit in front of my computer and just do some mindless activities. So please allow your friends to just be and, you know, also tell your friends how you're feeling or what you're feeling so that they understand and they don't take anything personal. And there's nothing wrong with being upfront with your friends about how you're feeling or what you're needing. Like Audrey said, if you do need your friends say, girl, I need you to call me back. I'm, I'm beside myself right now. I'm just going through a yeah. lot. When you get some yeah. time, I need you. Right. Yeah. Cause I'm sure yeah. your friend will drop whatever they're doing to be like, Oh shoot, let me call my girl or whatever. So, yeah, absolutely. 
those are the things that I wanted to share in this podcast. Um, I think it's very important for us to just, you know, be there for each other. Um, I recently did an episode on Jay Blessed podcast, and we talked about sisterhood and, you know, friendships, um, female friendships. And I can't wait for that episode to come out. I don't know when it's going to come out, but I'll be sure to post it when it does. And we were really just talking about the negative things that happen within, you know, friendships and also the positive, you know, about having female friends and having a sisterhood and how important it is, you know, so putting thought into our relationships and kind of just, you know, really thinking about how we want to be treated and reciprocating that in our relationships with others, I think it's very important. So, um, Audrey, I just want to thank you for coming on the podcast and sharing for some me. of your experiences um, because I really got this idea from just having a conversation with Audrey about reaching out. And it all started by us just talking about, you know, Black Lives Matter and these sorts of things that are occurring in our you know, world today. Yeah. Yeah. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Please let me know. Drop me a line.